Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Unpacked with Jack. Today we have the Bit Phoenix Colossus Mini. Now, if any of you were a fan of the original Bit Phoenix Colossus, then this might not come as a surprise to you that Bit Phoenix has decided to come out with a mini version of their gargantuan Colossus. So this is the micro ATX version. They also have a mini ATX version. Uh, that's actually right here by my feet. I don't exactly know if they're totally uberly different. So I'm just gonna unbox this one, check it out, and then unbox the other one off camera. And if there are any major differences interior wise, I'll crack that one open and show you guys what's going on on that one. So first off, we see that it comes with a quick installation guide. We have the Colossus Mini Micro IT ATX version. And grab myself so I don't shock myself. Right, comes in the hard styrofoam. Put that styrofoam away. Let's take a closer look. All right guys, now that we have the Colossus Mini taken out of the box, I brought the Lazy Susan with me to help me unbox this and showcase the case. First off, you might notice that Bitty Phoenix has brought back their soft touch finish, this time in matte black along the top and the front. Although the sides and the back of the case are all metal construction, but that's pretty much what you'd expect. Now there is a front door here that opens from right to left, and you can see the five and a quarter bay here and a fit air uh, filter here. Now you might be thinking how and why would they put an air filter here when it's covered up by a door. Well, Bit Phoenix has started that by providing air holes. So that way, <coughs> air gets pulled in through that from the top of the case at the very tip there. That's pretty cool. Taking a look along the sides, we have the two USB 3 uh, ports, headphone, microphone jack, reset, and the power switch. All right, as long as, along with the LED light track is what they're calling it. It runs from left to the front to the right hand side. Uh, this case actually does offer three, uh, three different colors in, for the LED. It's blue, red, and green. I think you all get that in one package. And also there is the LED, <coughs> LED button on the right hand side, excuse me. And the light track runs along that as well. On the top, we have something familiar that we've seen from the Phenom and the Prodigy. The removable fan filter. If I can undo the lock there and pull that off. There we go. Nice honeycomb mesh there. Uh, no re really foamy bits for an air filter, but the mesh is actually double meshed. So it's really fine filtered, so you can take that off and clean it. Re space for two 120 mil fans. All right, let's put that back and spin this around to take a look at the bottom really quickly. We have the power supply hole, which it mounts to the front there. And we also have the magnetic heat shield. That's for when you install hard drives on the bottom, keeps the heat from dissipating every which way. All right, and on to the back of the case. We have the more ventilation here, five PCI expansion slots. The motherboard is inverted and will be placed on the right hand side. And also we have a 140 mil fan on, on the back, I believe. E no, that's 120, but it does have room for 140, as you can see by the screw holes there. Not much else to see, so let's take, oh, no, there is the power cord re uh, relocated to the back because of the way the power supply is situated. Let's take a look at the interior. All right, let's first start off with the left-hand side of the case, or my left and your right. Undo these thumb screws that are really easy to take off. Well done, Bit Phoenix. All right, taking that off, we see all the cables for the side I/O panel. You know, for the all the audio and headphone and USB threes. We have an accessory box, and we also see the first part of the drive cage and a sneak peek at the power supply stand. All right, let's undo the right hand side and take a look at the rest of the interior. This lazy suit is make things so much easier. Take that off. Not much to see. It's very different from the other one, obviously, because it doesn't have the side panel there for the ins and outs. But you do see where the LED light track runs through. It's a really cool design. They got like a little light strip here that kind of connects to the front of the chassis. So you will need to take a screwdriver off for this hard drive tray to get access to the motherboard tray. 
for the micro or the mini ITX. So there you go, that's the large motherboard cutout. Doesn't seem to be a lot of room for cable management, but it's a pretty small chassis to begin with. So you kind of expect that from, from such a small form factor. We do have a 120 mil fan on the inside bottom there. I'm not sure if that, you can pick that up. And that's pretty much it for the interior. I mean, you got the cable relocator here for the power supply as well as a SATA power. Huh, that's probably for the LEDs. Speaking of LEDs, let's see if I can take off the front panel. <clears throat> so taking off the front panel here with the door is fairly simple. You just gotta press, depress these four clips and it pops right out. Super simple. We do see the uh, mesh here for the air filtering. Now, even though there's a huge, ginormous space for a fan, that's not actually what those uh, that honeycomb mesh is for. It's actually for ventilation for the power supply. Once you install a power supply, you won't actually be able to install a fan here, but you will be able to get all the air going in and out for your power supply. As well as on the side here, once you take that off, you will have access to mounting all the fans for the top of the fan filter. They just slot right in on the inside there. Speaking of fans, you might need to use screws and whatnot to secure it. So let's take a look at the accessory box that I so unfortunately ignored earlier. Pull that open. So what we have is a USB 3 to USB 2 adapter for the internal header, a bunch of grommets and screws and such for installing hard drives and the motherboard, and six zip ties for cable management. Awesome, always like to see stuff for cable management. That pretty much wraps it up, guys. I mean, if you wanted to, you can disassemble or take away that fan here on the middle and actually, uh, actually install two more three and a half hard drives and then you can install two here or even three SSDs on the opposite side here for a total of a lot of storage for something so packed small, if that makes sense at all. Anyways, thank you for checking out so far the micro ATX version of the Colossus Mini. I'm gonna quickly unbox the mini ATX version, see if there are any similarities, show it off in B-roll, and we'll be right back. All right, so here we have the mini ATX version of the Colossus Mini. There aren't much differences on the exterior and sides, as you might be able to tell here and here and here. We still have the door that swings open with the ventilation. Yep, and we still have the light track LED that wraps all the way around the three front sides. But where it really differs is the back. So we have once again a 140 or 120 mil fan slot for exhaust. A 120 mil has been included. We have the motherboard tray here, so it's a different design overall. It lays flat instead of horizontal uh, or vertical. And also we have the PSU location located at the back. So take off those four thumb screws and insert the PSU and slide it right in. And two PCI slots for expansion. Obviously with mini ITX, there isn't a lot of room for expansion, so that's why they only give you two slots. And taking a look at the top, it's still the same fan filter there, but if we rotate it to the bottom, we see the fan filter for the power supply. Nice to see that they've included that. Once again, good job, Bit Phoenix. So while I'm taking the time to undo these thumb screws, I would like to take some time and thank Bit Phoenix for sending us these units so we can showcase it for you guys. Thanks, Bit Phoenix. Keep them coming. All right, taking off the side panels here. All right, very much the same as the other one, the micro ATX version. So we have the wiring there. And on the inside, <laughs> you can see the motherboard tray here for mini ITX motherboards, and as well as a bunch of hard drive racks. And of course, the accessory box. I'm not expecting too much different accessories in here, but let's take a look anyways. All right, there we go. All right, so we still have these screws and grommets and whatnot. We even have a few, oh, they did the cable ties different. They give you one large cable wrap instead of including zip ties. So there are no zip ties this time, huh? And again, a USB 2 to USB 3 converter or the other way around, USB 3 to USB 2, right? Pop my knife back in. And with the hard drive tray, of course, you can depress the two 
and pull it out. So you can fit one, two, three hard drives in here, three, three and a halfs. Or you can take that out and leave yourself a lot of room for a single graphics card while still maintaining two hard drives here. All right, and as well, the front is very different just because there is no power supply in the way this time. This time, you can get a lot more airflow, right? So we see the same mesh there for the fan filter, right? And this time, there's a pre-installed 120 mil fan here instead of on the center like the other one did. And you can actually fit two 120 mils here or a big 200 or 230 mil on the front for even more cooling. So that pretty much wraps it up, guys. If you really like the styling of the Prodigy and the Phenom, but you wanted something a bit more flashy in terms of having a bunch of LEDs and whatnot, then the Colossus Mini is definitely right up, right up your alley. Thank you for checking out the video, guys. And I'm gonna have a bit of trouble putting this back on before this shot ends, but thank you for checking out this video on the Colossus Mini, guys. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Wait, 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 don't, don't roll the outro just yet. I forgot, we will be giving one of these cases away. One, yes, one Mini Colossus or Colossus Mini, however, which way you prefer. It's either gonna be the Mini ITX version or the Micro ATX version. You get to pick. All you have to do is subscribe and comment to this video. Um, say which one you like, and uh, if you want more chances to win, share this video on whatever platform you choose. So, Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, also follow me on Twitter. I'm trying to get more followers than Riley. I'm in keys.